It's me, Vera, here to remind you that this is an adult podcast. That means we're going to deal with tough topics. Take a break if you need it, and be kind to yourself, because we sure won't be. everybody and welcome back to stitch of fate a vampire the masquerade fifth edition podcast as always i am your storyteller mike martin joined by my wonderful players dot bub josh and mark hello hey, again hey. hello this is uh we have a hell of a scene to pick up on so um we'll, we'll we'll get through we'll get through the uh the shilling as quickly as possible hey if you want to support the show directly you can do so if you head over to patreon.com slash pod by night you can actually just directly financially support the show and in turn you get some cool benefits, including uh, exclusive uh, Discord stuff, um, behind the scenes after shows, and uh, sometimes occasionally maybe a little something mailed off to uh, wherever you live from the Coterie themselves. Um, otherwise, if you can't uh, directly support us, just letting your friends know or hitting the like button wherever you're listening to this or rating it on whatever podcast app you're listening to, all that stuff goes a long, long way toward uh, keeping the show going and uh, reaching new ears every day, which is crazy and great and we thank you for that um i think that's it i think that's all we've got for for the shilling so we can just dive right back into the game and see what everybody's going on so let's set the scene rein it in and see what the coterie is up to we hear the bustling of a daytime new york street honking horns chattering people and a, a bright sunlit sky a scene our eyes don't get to uh, observe very often as the camera pans down from the sky, we catch the sign of the Succubus Club. The lights are off, and again a very rare sight of a closed-down Succubus Club. We continue to pull back until we see Larson, just pushing himself off of a light pole, waiting for the approach of Sean, who had just turned the city block and was about to head back to the club before he too got eyes on Larson. Would Sean from this moment approach or would he do something else? Sean is going to take a look around and see if he's being observed by anyone else. You may make me a wits awareness. However, <clears throat> the difficulty is rather high as the streets during the day are much, much more packed with people than they are at night. One. With one success, it does not seem like it. It seems as though he's alone. Hmm. Okay. Well, um, in that case, Sean is going to catch Larson's eye and start walking in a direction that is uh, tangential to where the club is. He's going to try and find a nice, uh, a nice park bench or something. Sure. It's a few blocks away, but there's a small uh, area that's only about half of, uh, of the, the block itself that has a small wooded area with a couple of benches that people tend to sit on, but a lot more homeless people tend to sleep on. And uh, it's littered with trash, plastic bags whistling in the wind and empty beer bottles and cups scattered across the, what was mostly once green grass, now dead from pollution. And you were able to pull up a bench after um, somebody, you wait a little bit before somebody steps off and walks away. You plop down as you sit down comfortably. Within moments, Larson sits next to you. Uh, they made me kill your kid. Yeah. Unfortunate. You really had to do that to the club, too? I heard it got burnt down. I like that place, man. It was a shithole apart from every Thursday night. Yeah, thanks to me. I thought we had a good talk. Yeah, me too. So what happened? What do you think happened? Thin bloods turn up. The fucking sheriff comes to our door, gives us a mission, and then I get sent to kill my own. Yeah, welcome to the Camarilla. It fucking sucks. 
To right. The fuck you gonna do about it, though? So you weren't listening to a word I said. I heard the gist. I want to know what the fuck you're gonna do about it. Because I can't stand this shit anymore. Then take it the fuck down. What do you need me for, then? You can help. Okay, then. You're a smooth talker, Sean. Always have been. It's what I like about you. But how can I trust you now? I offered you an olive branch and you took three lives. I really, really didn't want to kill him. I, tr I tried like five different times to ask them to do something else about it. I don't fucking want to do anything else about it. If you want to trust me, then trust that I don't want to kill anyone else. Unless they're trying to kill me. Those thin bloods didn't do anything to me. So... Trust that I see myself in them. But you still did it. At the end of the day, you still took the actions that ended their lives. At the end of the day, you made a decision on what side to stand on. No, that decision was made the moment that you handed me over to the Camarilla. I handed you over to the Camarilla so you could die for being what you were. So I could make that decision for other people. Look, I want to help you. I really do. And you mean that. And he like looks at you dead in the eye. Make your ask, or... I'm going to do my own thing about the camera. What do you want, Sean? I want to get high and play video games all day. I can't do that because if I do, then eventually someone will come knocking on my door and put their fist through my head. Because that's what I had to do to them. So what I want to do is what I've always done. I've got no I've got no huge ambition to like be a fucking king of a city. I just wanna live a decent life. Have a good time. Then why don't you? Look where you are right now. You're sitting down on this bench and he kinda put pats his hand on it, he pushes down, it kinda creaks under the pressure. Able to breathe, normal air, while the sun shines down on your very skin and you don't dust, catch flame, or die. He points out to the street. Go take a car, any car. Leave the city. Go live a life of video games and getting stoned. You can do that. They ain't gonna chase you. They've already shown you that you're worth less than a fucking rat. You can have that. Always have someone else's sword hanging over my head, so... So what? You've just accepted that, and so why go anywhere? Okay, let me tell you. My real true ambition is to not die. Is that what you want to hear? What do you want? freedom to be who we are without having to worry about being killed for it all the damn time. Then do that. I am. The Camarilla cannot provide that. They have fed me the lies over and over again. Gave me a position on the Council for Power, which ended up just being another scapegoat seat. Hmm? somebody to point to and blame the problems on because I am what I am as if I had a damn choice. So fuck that. Embrace what we are. All these governmental rules, right? Always preaching about who we're supposed to be. How we're supposed to adhere to law. 
when in reality, we are a parasite. Always have been. Always will be. I was listening. You know what I want to be? I want to be a harbinger of the end times. He smirks at that. You can be. Hmm. The worm isn't this nuclear force that's going to show up and wreak havoc. That's what all these mystic believers think, right? The Gehenna, this end time, this is going to be this end of nights and we're all going to dissipate one by one, whether it's because of whatever fantasy old ones they think are going to come stomping back or whatever bizarre belief they have. But in reality, Gehenna is a slow death of our kind as they whittle away their own power and breed beyond their own comprehension. Their own blood thins. And he kind of gestures to you and gestures to himself. They create their own end times. But you know why we're the end times? Not because we're weaker than them. Because we're the next step. We can walk in the sun. We can steal things, as they would like to call it steal their abilities, their disciplines. We can do things they don't fucking understand. And just like when they were human, when you don't understand something, you're bad shit scared of it. And they're scared of us. Tales old as damn time, even when or we were what we were. Humans scared of other things because they don't understand them and so they try to control them. I'm not fucking buying that shit anymore. Sure, we're a sign of the end times, but simply because we're the next step in there. You could call it evolution. Just their next step in existence. That's what I seek, Sean. Allow us to stand on the stage of power where we deserve to be and serve the very thing that allows us to exist as we are. Servants of the worm, whether you want to be or not. Or you can listen to the Camarillo's whispers and lies some more. Maybe it'll take you a few decades like it did for me to understand it, but you'll come to the same conclusion eventually. Be a cog in their machine. I think we already have. What do you want to do? You know who the most powerful person in the city is right now? It's Kadir. You know who I really don't like? I know when he's going to be at our club and I know when so if you want to set a trap for him wouldn't be against it and what's to say you don't go running back to the others and start setting a trap for us to arrive I live with them. You know what happened last night? He shakes his head. I mouthed off and they treated me like a child. Get used to it. That's how they are. So, if you want to catch Kadir. I can give you a schedule. Or you can come up with an idea, but I'm hungry. So I've got places to be. What would you say meeting back here in a couple of days? Same time. 
an early morning coffee. Hmm. I don't think I've had coffee in a while. Sure. You can talk to me about that schedule, but I'm not foolish enough to just buy you at your word any longer. But I do enjoy, enjoy spending time with you. I always have. Even if it was just quietly watching and being proud of you while you grew. I'm happy to call you family. He reaches over and just kind of pats your shoulder. And he stands up before uh, he turns around. And uh, I'm going to make a roll real quick. Uh, he, he, uh, as he looks around, he gives, just gives you kind of like a, a really kind of quick wink with his hands in his pocket. And uh, he melds into the crowd and disappears. Sean, the camera turns back to Sean, seeing him sit on the bench. Still. Did you give a, does, do you look visibly confused? Uh. Yeah, because Sean doesn't know what the wink was about. <laughs> After a, a few moments of, like, thinking about that, what do we see Sean do? Would he step up and the rest of the day go by before the night arrives? Um, yeah, Sean's going to go back about his mission. He's going to find, um, he's going to see if he can find Thin Bloods. Okay. Well, we'll have a uh, rolls for that separately as it's just been a single night so far, uh, as you go through that. Can we get now as the night, the day sets, um, a rouse check for everybody as we arise for the next evening? <sighs> Sean is hungrier. Would you like to feed Sean, or are you good right now? Mm, Sean's good for the moment. Okay. One. What's everybody's hunger at, actually? Let's just get a full hunger round. Duke is at three. Sean is at three. Vera is at one. Okay, and uh, Max, you get a little hungrier. So what's that put your hunger at? Two. Okay, you're not bad. So we've got uh, two threes, a one, and a two. So as uh, Sean makes his way around the back of the club, as the sun is set maybe 30 or 45 minutes ago and the door swings open, you get past the Russian security who recognize and know you at this point. You head downstairs just as Vera would be probably coming down to the blood room to check on the prince and the code mostly comes together. And you see Sean is, uh, Sean, uh, correct, or Josh rather, correct me if I am wrong for rules. If you stay up during the day as a thin blood, are you tired at night? Uh, I don't think there's any rules about it, but as far as I'm aware, like, yeah, because you stayed up all day and then you stay up all night. Yeah, because so I know you can push tired. through, you can definitely push through as a full kindred. If you stay out of sunlight, you can push through the day, but it costs like willpower and it like tires you out and stuff. But all right, cool. We'll say, yeah, we'll say as you come down and Sean is noticeably a little bit more groggy, a little bit more slow. Again, something that Veer has probably seen in the past as he does spend days awake from time to time. But he'd be the first one there. And Vera would be the first one down, unless Duke and Max would be there as well. But the coder would eventually come together is what I'm getting at. And I know Max wants to speak with him at least. Yeah, he might, Max, I think, might even try to intercept him on the way in. Sure, we can definitely have that. As, as you make your way toward the blood room where Vera's waiting, Max would, uh, you would catch him kind of walking by and you'd be able to grab his attention or grab hold of him uh, before he does. Hey, kid, can I have a little word in your shell-like ear? Uh, I don't have pointy ones, so... Yeah, I noticed, I noticed. Come here, I need to have a word. Yeah, yeah, sure. Where do you take him? Hey. Into your closet yeah, Max, area? Max actually brings him into the big storage closet, uh... And now taken up by a quite a large cat tree. He gestures to a crate. Sit down, kid. Uh, yeah, Sean sits down and then starts going <laughs> towards <laughs> Max Jr. As you see Sean sit down, the crate actually, as you sit down, lists to its left a little bit. There's actually a large crack up the side of the left, so your weight is just going to make it lean just a bit. So you're kind of always at an angle as Max Jr. crawls out of the tree nearby and comes up and starts smelling your fingers. Now, uh, 
I know we already had a little bit of a chat about what you said yesterday to the sheriff, yeah. but um, I feel like I really need to drive the point home, you know? Look, Sean, I'm going to be honest with you. I like you. You're a jackass and a joker, and you don't think take things too serious, and uh, I like that. It's a breath of fresh air, but some things you can't joke about, especially with certain people. <laughs> and maybe you heard him say strike two. When I know you, you're British or whatever, so maybe uh, you know more about cricket than baseball, but when you get to strike three, you're done. And in this case, done means dead without dying. It means you're likely going to be really uncomfortable for a very long time before the end comes, you know? Yeah, I kind of got that. Yeah. He but I just don't think you're... me funny. Like, I get that he's scary. Yeah, you get it, but I don't think you're getting it. I don't think if you understand what I'm talking about here. You would have saved me, right? There wouldn't have been much I could do. Well, I promise I won't make that joke again. Yeah, it's probably wise to avoid any attempts at humor, you know? Especially, did... especially when it's the kind that's going to get you ripped in half, and then in the quarters, and then in the eights. And, well, you know how numbers yeah. work, right? Yeah, sort of. Uh, where did everyone's sense of humor go? Uh, like, is that what people lose when they get bitten? In no. I sure don't like to think so. But look at it this way, kid. It wouldn't just be you. You made Vera look bad. And I don't think she likes that very much. In fact, I know she don't. So, word to the fucking wise, okay? I hadn't considered that bit. I don't want to make Vera yeah. look bad. Yeah. You really don't. Kadir, on the other hand. <laughs> hey. If I could, I would put him in clown makeup. Yeah, well, hey, nobody gets to tell you how you feel, but watch the fucking mouth. <laughs> uh, all right. Good talk. All right, let's go. Hey, maybe one day I can give you a talking to. You going to do yeah. anything stupid sometime? All the fucking time. All the fucking time, kid. I speak from experience, and that's why I'm trying to help you out. Yo, are you going to take out Gustav? Is that... I heard that's not legal. Mm, well, Gustav... Gustav and me, that's a special case. And you're right. Some things it's worth sticking your neck out for. But just being a random jackass ain't one of them. Play your cards smart, Okay. Got ya. Who leaves the room first? Max actually just sort of like gestures. You know, <laughs> when, you know, just like after after you. Sean is um gonna be disappointed that Max Jr. has not arrived uh and then leaves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't look so don't look so sad. He could probably take your arm off. Yeah. Yeah, he looks swole. Yeah, and uh, I don't think it's improved his disposition much. He's a bit of a grouch with other people, you know. As long as he likes you, that's all I care about. <laughs> as the cat, as you're about to leave, you, feel, you see Max Jr. crawl up from the tree onto, uh, onto um, Max's shoulders and settle in comfortably.
the two of you make your way out, but since the two of you are speaking, Duke and Vera have come together in the blood room quietly together as the prince lies on the nearby bench. Max and, uh, you can actually hear in the distance, a distant voice of Max and Sean, you know they're, they're around having, having a talk or just chatting somewhere, but it does leave Duke and Vera alone. Something's the matter, Vera. Something weighs on you. How could you tell? You carry it like a badge of honor at times. It makes you strong. Why do I feel like the jackass in all of this, Duke? I'm just waiting for somebody to say jokes on you, you know? It's hard to say, really, why anyone would want to make you look this way. Or feel a certain way. Duke, you are gathering friends in high places rather quickly. I'm aiming pieces. Vera, there's a difference. Okay, fine. What are you aiming for? Knowledge. It helps. I can make moves, meet new people, discover new puzzles. The more I know, the easier it will be to do those. To understand them. So, is this like a process versus product kind of conversation? A little bit of column A, a little bit of column B, I'm afraid. So what, you just want to know more? When you know everything on the board, you never stumble into any traps. And if the traps are setting themselves without your knowledge, you at least have a minor inclination of understanding about who's setting them. And once you know the person, well, even if they've been alive for hundreds or thousands of years, they only have the capacity to understand the depth of a trap to a certain degree. I don't like to walk into traps. I don't like to leave myself available and open to them. It seems like an opportune time to... gain such status and benefit, if Kadir is right. Such is the way. This is just how Kindred operate, is it not? I guess I did not take you for a... I didn't know you strived for such things, Duke. Vera, I'm not sure if I'm striving for anything short of any... anything more than long-term survival. There are some odd and skewed relationships inside of our world. And by our world, I mean the existing lines that run parallel, like the Chantry and the Camarilla. I've never understood why they're at odds. I think it's a matter of fears. But if you can guide those fears, you remove the power from such. Then I have a question for you, Duke. With all this information and all this planning and plotting and knowing, you could have friends in all the right places. So what are you doing here? I think someone to the outside might see myself as biding time, but I, I find it rather enjoyable here at times. Even in my living life, I found my situation always terse. I was averse to natural relationships. I lacked friends. It was constantly under scrutiny for every move and action that I did. And those around me that were weak couldn't understand my line of thinking. They weren't forged in the same fire. And in order to garner their understanding, I had to go through certain levels of behavioral modification with them. In this world, however, I fit in more. But I still find that there are things that go against the grain of Duke Bremond. <laughs> You're your own puzzle, Vera. It's interesting watching you come to terms with the things that you were in your past and the things that are still yet to come in your future. And I find myself an admiring onlooker. Oof. I appreciate that. I do love to be worshipped, you know. <laughs> That's a way of saying it, yes. You probably see, like, Duke, uh, smile. That being said, it is 
been quiet for so long. We're ten years we've just been. Sean's been about and Max in the basement, both trying to get past everything that Gustav has done. And in all that time, not one Rylo. And then Larson comes to my doorstep. Interesting creature. Sean was just fine. Yes, well, he was just fine before Larson showed up. No, I mean you. You're an interesting creature. You are very much a Toreador in many ways. No reason denying what you are. But you would relate so well with what you've just said to the Bruja clan. Puh. The quiet is a shakable foundation with them. Yes, well, I've spent my fair share of time partying with a Bruja. Don't worry. Vera's got a past, Duke. Gasp. Vera, I have some mild concerns. We speak very candidly in front of the prince, and she no doubt files this information away for use at a later point, of which she <laughs> will dole out accolades and reward to those that serve her well. One can only hope. What is she going to do about Sean? I don't know. What is anyone going to do about Sean? He's rather confusing. A puzzle in his own right? Sean walked out of here yesterday with a smirk, Vera. <sighs> Who am I to stop him? Look, Duke, when I was young and stupid, I did a lot of... I did a lot of things. I wasn't always with the Camarilla. As I've made very clear, I am choosing to be here. A little change of pace, I guess. When I see to the Chantry, I'm going to see how I might be able to create a pervasive ward or block against Thin Blood Alchemy. Ugh. Sean is not going to like that. You know he's up there uh, cooking away in his little thin blood laboratory. He's at an impasse, Vera. I'm afraid that we, despite our best efforts, will find Sean deciding whether or not he fits in with the Coterie or if he is to find a, a family away from ours. I'm surprised that it's taken you this long to alert him to your past doings. I have not entirely alerted him. If we're being candid, he can't be that stupid. Sean is quite a bit more alert than I think we're giving him credit for. But he's still very much a child in many ways. He's just rebellious. And I get it. I didn't like the Camarilla either. Well, I said horrible things and did stupid things and... <sighs> I did it. I'll... I've been there. I just don't have the energy for it anymore. Jaded to the whole uh, game of rebellion. It never got me fucking anywhere. But you learned that. How I many did. people did I... you have to cross in that time? <laughs> you mean how many people crossed Vera? Well, that's a story for another day, Duke. You are a fool, Blood, though. Sean is not. He doesn't it's have true. access to the litany of disciplined abilities that we might. No, but he has access to a litany of other things that we don't. True. True. Yes. I wish to understand a bit more of this thin blood alchemy, as I've read. <coughs> There's no limitations, Vera. Have you done much studying on this? <laughs> on alchemy? Other than the mixture of cigar smoke to vodka intake, I think not. The Tremere have an understanding of their boundaries. They know that it takes a lot in order to make, but what I found with the Tremere is that they oftentimes do not work together unless there is a childer situation and they are forced to do as such. But the Thin Blood, much like I'm assuming that the Gangrel have been in the Midwest, they've been outcast and they've been felt. 
as lackluster or less than that, and they are banding together. Thin Blood Alchemy seems to lack a lot of the more abhorrent and visual boundaries. Well, Sean seemed to handle himself fine around the alchemy. At least he did so on that other Thin Blood. That being said, I... <laughs> make up for old mistakes, maybe. I think Sean is going to be key to us waking up our prince. I'm not entirely sure I disagree with you on that matter, which is why I want to keep her safe. Unlike everyone else, I want to prove a point. Would you like to know what it is, Duke? And Vera turns and looks right at the prince. Hmm? You see, I'm being very candid and open with these conversations right in front of her, because when, when she wakes, I want her to know. To have to settle with that. That a bunch of degenerates. Outcasts, as you put it, do you? Black sheep, and yes. <laughs> yes. Well, when all is said and done, we shall see. Vera, you have yeah. a way with people, and it's something that I cannot deny. <laughs> okay. I need you to find someone with more knowledge inside of the, sh not the Chantry per se, but the Camarilla that can help me with something. And I'm afraid that no one will be able to do this but you. What do you need? We'll need to discover the prince's feeding habits if we wish to wake her. Lest we risk a rampage through our home and further. We might need to seek that deplorable man Arturo. Oh, don't worry. I've already set a trap for Arturo. I gave John a list just this evening of a few errands I need him to run. He should be back maybe this evening, in fact, with a very special invitation for Arturo. If we meet the necessities of the prince and her feeding habits, that is, of course, our bane, we are only allowed to feed on very specific individuals. Uh, that is a very uh, private topic to you to very be much bringing so. up to the harpy. Even if it's not the harpy, then we might need to ask Kadir. And I think he might know, or at least have an idea. I'm sure he does. He didn't seem very pleased with me tonight. Not that that's ever changed anything I still stand by my thoughts Vera I think that he is at the very least on a single side emotionally involved <laughs> what do you mean emotionally involved I think he's infatuated with the prince the way that he touches her jaw carefully so he brushes her hair from her face he mumbles under breath in a way that we cannot hear or see. Are you insinuating that the Prince and Kadir are bonded in some way? Potentially, that might be there. But I am not aloof to the idea that Kindred can still fall in love. <laughs> Why? Does this word keep coming up in polite conversation? Well, that is a theory I had not considered, Duke. He's taking a lot of extra care. Sometimes you just have to take a step back and glance at the larger picture. Well, it is his job, but... Yes, your conspiracy theory may... Prove to not be such a conspiracy. Yes. Well, as enlightening as this conversation has been, I'm feeling a bit parched. Oh, hi. It's me, Vera. While you're taking a break, take a moment to visit DieHardDice.com. Die Hard Dice is a sponsor of this little podcast. They make what we do possible. 
During checkout, make sure to use the code STITCH-APR and you'll get 10% off your entire purchase. And we get a little cut for our own resources. Mm. Sounds like we only roll with the best. As you say, parched, in strides Sean. Followed by Max. Hi. How was everyone? Uh, good, Vera, good. Uh, how was, uh, how was your day? Sleep well? No. There's a lot going on. I guess, uh, this is the part where I ask what's the rumpus. <laughs> this would be that part. Mm-hmm. We need to prioritize moving our dear prince. You have to house her in something. Essentially, what I'm looking for is what do you plan? Like, what are the exact plans? Where do you want to and, wall her? And Vera says, and between all of us, I have a plan. I say we tell Kadir we brick her in one place and we brick her in another. I thought so. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it's a smart play, probably. I say that we brick her in an opposite wall, a different nook. Same plan, keep her in the basement. We have some options of barring that area off in case she comes out a little angrier than planned. And we can always have fresh, well, humans about. Fair enough. I'm going to start looking into some other bits of security. The Russians are wonderful, but they will not stop a raging prince, I doubt. Yeah. Uh, Vera, you got access to uh, blueprints for this place? Maybe in the attic. There are some old things left over that didn't burn in the first fire. Yeah, well, this uh, might be more Duke's department, but we might want to look into... uh, Making sure we don't place it too close to a radiator, a tunnel, or sewer. Oh. Or a radiator, Sean. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I see that our little chat has had no effect whatsoever. You're such an idiot. <clears throat> I thought Thank it you. was funny. Uh, yeah, well, I'm sure the prince also thinks so. I guess what I'm saying is we'll do none of the sort. I think that's actually a very smart idea. We should probably look and find the most secure place to actually put her and then tell everyone else she is somewhere else. Max. Max, are you are you capable of removing the brick from the wall without damaging the mortar too much? Mm, yeah, it's going to take a little finesse, but I, I could probably use a crowbar or whatnot. If I do it with my hands, it's likely to get a bit messy. We're going to need some precision and care. This is my area of expertise at disguising a scene to look one way when it should be another. I can put in an order for new brick, but if we are clever, and we are, we will move old brick to the location, rewall her in, and then we'll place new brick in areas so as to make them believe that she is where she is not. Hmm. Yeah. I liked it. (laughs) Sure. Little control of the situation. Oh, question. We're not, are we, we're not speaking freely in front of the prince's body currently, are we? Oh, oh, I mean, Vera yeah. is unless we wanted to take, have taken it out in the hallway. I, if I think we are. Like yeah, I think that's yeah, yeah, what's yeah. happening. Again, yeah, Vera's that's... being very open with the prince about the fact that, like, <laughs> you want to stay safe? I'll keep you safe. <laughs> yeah, and so, yeah, that was lar- like when Max said, well, I'm sure the prince feels the same way. Yeah. He very pointedly hooked a thumb towards the body. Yes, 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 our dear prince. Well, cards are on the table now. If she comes out of whatever this is, which we are actively going to find out what is wrong, then if she wants to be mad at us for how we handled it, it's easier to ask forgiveness. Uh, Here's a question. Have we thought of a way of maybe rigging up some kind of blood feeding tube so that when she snaps out of it she's not gonna you know go nuts 
Like, she'll be fed, right? I've got some going spare. It's not going to be possible until we discover what the prince's feeding habits might be. She might be of the situation where she can only feed on, even in rarer occasions, dead blood. Huh. What's so rare about that? Max says as he <laughs> pulls a juice box out of his pocket, uh, starts, you know, bites the scab off the end and begins <laughs> sucking. Uh, I assume this will count as him feeding for the day. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. As you start slurping down one of your uh, blood bags. Well. Perhaps it's something to deal with. Again, your, as you said, Carpathian bloodline. I'm not entirely sure, but most, most kindred are averse to consuming dead blood. Yeah, I, I should be clear. That Carpathian shit is just something Gustav told me. It might be a lie. Well, consider it to others just as a basic allergy at this point, sometimes lethally so. But I, since it's the four of us, including the prince, I have a very specific feeding regimen. I can only operate for those that, that owe me, and I am prepared to extort whatever means that I might. Additionally, I can only feed on men. Only men. Gotcha. Well, if it's that specific, then yeah, any old blood ain't gonna do. Uh, how do we? Uh, how do we figure out? We what need to she find those on. that she's closest to that would know and delivered her such food. Yeah. The older the blood, the rarer it becomes. I imagine that. Kadir probably knows, and if nothing else, if I can finagle my way into that conversation, I might be able to poke the harpy for it. I think Arturo might know, but I'm afraid that if we begin poking about the feeding habits of the prince while the prince is currently Precisely. gone, it's going to raise some yeah, suspicions. I, I think if Kadir knows, he's our best bet. So, I have a thought, and it's... Uh, Tricky one, yes. Kadir said that rumors are beginning to spread that the prince is missing. Do you know how you stop a rumor? With another rumor. Not the way I was going with it. I was going to say by removing the head, but this well, works yes, as well. You can. Yeah, I was going to say kill, kill the gossip. Uh, yes, I, to kill yeah. the gossip, you just feed new gossip. Gossip is a never-ending thing. It doesn't stop and ever. It just festers. Okay, so uh, what rumor is going to counter whatever's flying around right now? Well, long, long ago... Uh, Max will remember this. Something called propaganda, where you were fed false information to believe something. <laughs> Who's to well, say that we don't start seeding false information? That the prince has been seen. Oh, she's been seen somewhere she's not supposed to be. No, like, that is not what I said, Sean. But we can talk about it. It's juicy, it. though. It is. And good gossip is always juicy. You know, Sean, there are some days that you grind on me like a metal spike down a chalkboard. And then there are other days I just... I might just like you, Sean. I live for those days. As he says that, we see Sean's face just light up with the <laughs> widest smile. <laughs> I've got to figure out how to seed such a rumor. But do you know the best gossip monger? He has a very special present coming. An invitation to this club. To my time. Sean, would you be a dear... You want me to dress up as the prince and appear in, him, uh, in, in his presence and then... I sure hope not. No, please don't, don't do that. Um, uh. I have just a package for you to deliver to him. Oh, sweet. He'll love that you're the one delivering it. Oh, we're I have no doubt. As uh, as you, fi you finish saying that, you can actually hear a back door kind of open and slow, shuffling, old man footsteps are slowly echoing down the concrete hall until just around the corner, an old gentleman by the name of John with a wrinkled face and a mostly bald head peers hunched. He looks up at Vera with a, well, what does he have, Vera? As he wordlessly presents what he 
what you want to send him he has out a, to get. a small cedar box, uh, very beautifully stained with like um, uh, a wrap around it and a label on the top in like gold foil stamped into this beautiful wood burn. Um, and it has arch. He leans forward and as he offers it forward, he simply says, Miss Volkov. Thank you, John. Uh, the rest of the evening. Take it off, please. Uh, she's too kind as he turns and he shuffles He's away so very old. slowly. Um, and, yeah. and Max uh, Max actually sort of brightens up when John comes and is like, oh, hey, John, how you doing, kid? He looks yeah. over to Max and there's what was, was maybe a smile, but the wrinkles are too much and he waves and is like, good to see you, Sir Maxwell. <laughs> you take care, Junior. He, nod, he simply nods and he slowly turns and as he shuffles away very slowly. There are only certain kinds of invitations to this club, one of which is this. And she opens the lid to a box of cigars, hand-rolled, beautiful, oily, dark, um, and they have a wrap around them. On each wrap is a gold-foiled Arturo. It just says Arturo, 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 his name over and over and over again. And laying on top is a key. This certainly would have cost, I'm going to cut oh, for a moment. Oh, a pretty This pity. certainly would cost some money. Yeah, we will use a resource dot for this. I can totally um, do that. Where would you like to pull that from? Personal, your personal resource oh, dots, which refreshes every 30 in-game days? Yeah, or I have the, three. Do you have any temporary Three left? resource dots as we speak. Oh, for your personal, personal um, resources. Okay, so take take one of those away for, and it'll return at the at the beginning of the next thirty days, basically. Okay. So temporary removal. You're down to two for the rest of the month. All right, cool. Um, so you would have spent a pretty yeah. pretty penny on this sucker. This is like a thousand dollars. And on top is a key, a a gold key, which says the only VIP option in Vera's club is a cigar box. He has a key. And sick cars, and if he wants to show up, he can anytime he wants to. Okay. Hmm. Balls in Archuro's court. Let's see if he's ballsy enough to show his face here. Max is is Max a cigar guy? Is this something uh, he would uh would have ever taken uh, partaken in, or is he not really a big cigar guy? Yeah, I'd say, you know, World War II grunt. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Like, I just can see yeah. you with, like, the st cigar sticking out. So, yeah, the stogie. Is, as this is, like, st you know, presented in front of you, is Max, like, taken aback? And, like, these are incredible. Are they Cubans? Like, are these Cuban cigars? Um, yeah, I imagine. Or, I mean, who have we been dealing with? Um, Rush the, Russians, the Russians. I mean, um, yeah, Russian so, yeah, cigars. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, they would They would be, I would think, actually. Irish, yep, the Irish ooh. you might have been able to. Yeah, the Irish. Vera, Ooh, yeah, you could have fed money to the Irish and get some, get Irish, some cigars. Irish cigars. Yeah, they would have been just hand rolled, really beautiful. I imagine if they're dark too, they may have it. They may. This be, matters yeah. actually. Who did you pay money? Like, who oh, did this who did money give... go to? Who did you invest like a grand in for this handcrafted oh. thing just to like give them some business? That's a you know what? You, that's a good question. Um, the best cigars in town would probably come from whoever could get the import. Who runs the docks? The Russians, for the most part, they're the biggest. They're the biggest names uh, around in uh, uh, in terms of like in this world for currently. Them, yeah, the Irish are trying to make an up and coming swing. They have a piece like so. It really depends. Like this, like the docks are mostly run by by the Russians, but you know people are still going to try and get their boats in every so often. Well, we so have lost could... the uh, the Italians in terms of business, right? Yes, you've lost the and Italians. We're bringing in new art, so maybe new clientele. So put it this yeah. way. If you want to, if you want to use one dot of resources, you can get the imports through the Russians. If you want to use two dots of resources, because it's harder uh -huh. for the Irish to get it in, so they want a little bit more cut to ensure that they're gonna, it's worth their trouble. You could get it from the from the Irish, but you build some rapport with the Irish in the meanwhile. Are they? Will they run? Okay, only if they run drugs. That's the deal. They have to start buying from us. Uh, yeah. I mean, we that, we we can have that yeah. that conversation. Oh, that's that would be um, kind of the trade off. I think Vera that would be would, a good way yeah. to open up conversation yeah. about buy to be buying something a little yeah. less Worth it. black markety out the Worth top. It. So this will allow you. An, an in to start speaking about drug business dealings with the Irish, see if it's worth your while and whatnot. In the meanwhile, you bought yourself some goodwill with them, but you use two resource dots instead. This is like a, <sighs> this is like Cuban imports, hand rolled, plus all the the handmade like tags and stuff. Right. So this costed you a very pretty penny, but it came through the Irish smuggling. Yeah. So when that box was opened, there was a long low whistle from Max, <laughs> like just like, and he's like, holy shit. You believe in making a good impression? Always. 
You can't let them one-up you. At least not in your own fucking club. Oy. How embarrassing. Plus, I need to be in his good graces. He seems to, for whatever reason, either enjoy my company or at least enjoy toxic company. And he loves making fun of Sean. You seem... As the, you, you say that, as you snap the box shut and hand the box over to Sean for him to deliver. <laughs> mind the mouth, kid. Just mind the fucking mouth. So fucking tempting, though. He's a massive bellend. Listen, Arturo is a man who needs his ego stroked. If things get dicey and you're feeling hot at the collar, do us all a favor and just revert conversation back to how much I can't wait to see him at the club. Hmm? Good to know. Good to know. Uh, Sean stacks the uh, cigars under his arm and then goes goes out. You can hear them Ugh. jostle just for a moment as he, he does so. Oh, yeah, you can hear <laughs> them all rattle around inside, and he steps off with a like I said, he jaunts <sighs> off in the opposite direction, uh, looking to head out, leaving again to three of you instead without Sean there. Um, is there any more conversation you all would like to have? Because then I have a follow up question about the body that I need to have answered. No. Okay, everybody good? Yeah, right, cool. I think yeah, so, now's the time. <laughs> there's a few options you can do with the body here. You can do it by hand, slowly get the brick yourself, slowly tear it down. It'll take a lot more mm -hmm. time if you do it on your own. You could, of course, hire a construction company to come down and do an expansion on it or rewall up or do whatever it is that you want to do it uh, that way. Or you could have your black market people come in and maybe do that on the down low um, to do it by their end. But basically, if you you can have other people come in and like, restructure this stuff and and then you would of course you would have to do the final brick up because the body would be hidden away while they do mm -hmm. it but if you wanted to it basically buys you time if you do it by hiring somebody you gain time or if you do it yourself um less people know that there was construction happening here but it's going to take you like a week or so so i just, uh, just want to know i think that maybe we get contractors to do the fake one right but maybe we bury it a little deeper so that it's not quite so obvious. Maybe we go the black market route, have them set up the fake one. We do the real one ourselves. So it also, it looks like we were trying at least a little bit to hide the construction of the fake one. Cool. So Sean, where would Sean go to present this to Arturo? Like Sean jaunted off without really asking where to go. So where would Sean think to go? Sean's going to go to the tower. Ivory Tower. All right. I like that. Off to the Ivory Tower. What about Duke and Vera? And uh, we'll worry about Max in a moment here. What would Duke want to be doing for the evening? Duke would probably be hunting for information regarding uh, Thin Blood Alchemy and likely going back to see what he can, he can discover about uh, wards. And you gave the symbol to obviously... Sturgis Reason. at the Shantry. Did you give it to anybody else? Did you give it to the cop? I can't remember. No? No. Okay, that's not, not something you would have done with the cop. And what, as far as Luther. Luther has been you, looking over some information. Your files. I say, did you, did you end up ever, did you ever dedicate any time to that yet so far? Or not yet? No, I just said interesting and I pushed it to the side. Yeah, but you kind of slid it off. I think when, I mean, two things, like Duke's got to solve that. Um, sure. Which begs the question, what does Luther actually no what is he guessing Certainly. what does he know because he knows that duke hasn't aged a day yep yep um additionally yep. duke needs to feed mm -hmm. still haven't done that <laughs> yeah you're at three mm -hmm. yeah you're getting a little antsy you're getting a little antsy on the food so i'm sorry then where would duke go initially you would initially for the beginning of the night go look to feed or would you go looking and doing research or would you go to the chantry and Probably double dip if he can. Go to the Chantry looking for uh, information regarding wards and uh, Thin Blood Alchemy and trying to acquire uh, through Sturbridge a method of feeding. Okay, understood. Um, then that's where we'll find our camera on the outside of where the Chantry is before we see Duke reaching over to lightly rap on the window. A few moments later, a familiar blonde girl opens the, the door, sees you and without words, actually just steps aside and ushers you in. As you step into the quiet little like antique side shop that seems to never have any guests, 
She shuts the door, locks it, and the sign still is flopped to where it says closed. She makes her way around the desk and quickly uh, kind of settles herself in the nearby chair. And she gestures to a, a rickety old chair nearby. She's like, yeah, you can take a seat. Uh, I'll, I'll let them know you're here. I'll do as such. She doesn't seem to do anything before uh, she actually reaches over to the door that you were letting before. And she just knocks a couple of times after about five or so minutes pass of you sitting there. And then uh, without much uh, time after that knock, it, actually, it creaks open. And a unfamiliar young man um, stands in its doorway. He's completely clean shaven with a really short black hair and dark brown eyes. He's wearing just jeans and a t-shirt. And he's like, I, you are Duke then? Yes, I am. Whom would I be speaking to now? No, just come with me. And he, he pushes the door open. Stands and follows. As you step through the door and he shuts, he's like, hey, uh, you can call me Isaiah, by the way pleasure Isaiah yeah yeah same so I was told that a Duke Premin may be coming by for some warding stuff yes okay good glad we got the right person and I didn't accidentally let in somebody else and he takes like a sigh of relief and he uh, goes to a nearby door and he opens it and it leads to what looks like a small little study room a desk nearby a window um, another with like a laptop on it and a few books that sit behind that uh on first glance, just look like normal mortal books. There's no any bizarre kindred volumes that kind of sit on the shelves. And in a very kind of orderly way, he gestures for you to sit down, like you're being sat down for an interview as he sits behind his desk and closes his laptop and kind of slides it to the side. So what kind of words do we need? I am I believe that I will need multiple words and I'll supply the subject of which the words will be put upon something mobile. But particularly, I need something to shield, uh, ward from roving eyes. Um, it sounds like you're asking for quite a lot. Um, yeah, the size of the room that you need warded. Is it a personal ward for yourself that you carry on you, on your clothing in particular? I need something roughly the size of twice a coffin. Twice a coffin wide? I'll probably only need one circle for that. And... And you need the ward to do multiple things. Particularly, I need to remove it from wandering eyes and any protection that I can find against the future Tremere or Thin Blood magic. Well, um, that's a lot. It It'll is. Be multiple wards. Each ward is quite an endeavor and a bit of commitment on our end. Um, are you sure you're going to be able to? I mean, the regent, the regent requested that I listen to what you need and, and make do, make happen the best I can. I'm not quite sure she realized you were asking for this much, though. To give you an idea, each, each use, each warding causes the kindred in question to become incredibly hungry. Multiple wards over the course of multiple nights require multiple feeding. We'd have to stretch it out of the course of months so we don't overfeed. And each one will require, of course, a form of payment beyond the first. I don't see a problem here. I'm waiting for you to actually hang me up with something that's a challenge, Isaiah. If you answer specifically to the regent, she seems to believe that you're more than capable, unless you're suggesting otherwise. Oh, um, I am incapable of all of this, but I will ensure that we have somebody there to take care of it. Um, she finds your seems she finds your business valuable at the very least. Well, um, what would you consider the most important for you? To ward off wandering eyes. Things he that scribbles that down. Might only be available to kindred. And when are you looking, to, hoping to have this done by? Immediately. He, uh, looks down and he, he kind of writes things down again. Well, I can't promise that we'll have anybody available in the next few nights, but Within the week, I'm sure we could have somebody there. I'll supply something that you will need to ward, either yourself or whomever is the talent on the subject. I'll bring it here, probably encased in a teak structure. It is a cage. I'm hiding some things. I'm just going to say this out loud. The, the, the region just might have questions of what you're hiding. 
That doesn't mean I'm necessarily required to answer. No. I can place guarantees in this space to know that it is nothing that will bring harm to the Chantry, to the Regent, or anyone under this roof. Simply, there are things that we as kindred know that we must keep a secret so that we can keep safe. Isaiah, you must understand this. Yeah, of course. And, you know, and he kind of gestures wildly to the room. He's like, it's, you know, it's part of the way I live my life, but... Understood. Nothing that it's going to get... If you can, if you place... You know what? I'll just tell her. And if she's fine with it, I'm fine with it. I'm not one to argue. And uh, he kind of closes the, the notebook and ducks it away. Before you leave, I would like to abscond from this place with some textual information regarding Thin Blood Alchemy and what capacities are known at this moment. Um, okay. I don't... I'd have to clearance. I need... I, I'll stay um, as long as I need to in an effort to read so as to not leave. I wish to not remove information if I can, but something that I can take away here is more valuable than not. Hmm. Well, I will make the request. I uh, I don't have clearance for that kind of thing. Sorry. And he uh, stands up and looks to scuffle, shuffle his way out. Very well. I'll wait. And Duke just kind of like crosses his hands. And the camera just lingers on that for a while as Duke, almost like a statue, crosses his hands and sits patiently as time crawls by. An hour passes. Two hours pass. Three hours pass, and the Duke remains still until eventually there's a gentle rock, a knock at the door just before it hits the four hour mark. The door opens, and there is that similar gentleman, Isaiah. He squeaks in, and he actually seems a little surprised to see you still sitting in the exact position you were in. And uh, he looks over, and he, he looks over to you as he steps in and pulls out of his, his pocket uh, a small book. It's all I could get clearance for, and it's really just stuff you probably already know, but sorry to have you wait so long, and he slides it across the table. Is there more information outside of this that you did not get clearance for? He shakes his head. I am not privy to that knowledge, unfortunately. Then yes, that's all I needed to know. When will I be able to see the regent again? I can let her know or tell the right people, and she can let you know. I'm sorry. I just I you say just ask came out questions. Of... You have something that is on your mind, just to save us both the time, as you've wasted my last four hours. Well, I don't know if you know how things work here, but I ask somebody, and then they have to go take care. Of a lot of paperwork involved. I, my confusion lies in simply who you are, why you're here, and how you have so much sway. And this is just confusion. Who am I? My name is Duke Premond. Yes, I knew that. I just don't... I'm black sheep I... of the Ventru. I operate outside or inside of the Camarilla and around it, and I'm hoping to operate similarly within the Chantry. A middleman, if you will. I don't play the side that is a necessity for their own rise. I play what is valuable to me and me alone. All right. Well, it's good to meet you, uh, Duke Premon. Again, pleasures, Isaiah. He uh, turns and uncomfortably leaves as we see Duke kind of crack open a small book of scattered different hand notes from multiple different authors over the course of time that indicate curiosity on, um, on uh, Thin Blood Alchemy, the idea that they are able to pull uh, from it. But the really, the, like, what does Duke, should I say, what does Duke know about Thin Blood Alchemy, if anything at all, before I... He knows that they're capable read. of it. He knows that they can pretty much make shit up. As long as there's enough blood and the willingness to do it, they can mix it with just about anything to make some things happen, especially if they fall under the purview of a, an acting discipline. And that's kind of like the info that you get for the most part out of the book. The only other, I'd, get, I'd say, piece of information that Duke would get off of this is that there seems to be, and there's a, it's a question mark, as it's, so it's not certain, but off to the side, there's a question mark that simply says there's, there needs to be, um, the, 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 end of the, the kind needs to be under a certain intense emotion, question mark, and then like a kind of an underline under that. I think Duke has an understanding what that might mean. Uh, 
uh, mechanically, he has Bloodhound. He can sniff these things out. He's capable yeah. of, of hunting um, this information. So that's the, the good to other, know. The other bit you would pull is that there's another at the back towards the end of this notebook that's another question of like, thin bloods don't do it, don't do alchemy the same? Question mark. Interesting. That's it. That's all you pull from this book. Some questions from early, early research, it looks like, from years and years and years ago. Close the book, push in the chair, and find his way out. And as the camera finds itself outside the shop, and we see Duke step out and uh, stand amongst the crowd, though we can still clearly see his tall figure, easily see uh, his easily visible through the silhouette of mass of humans, we cut back to the front of the club. We can hear hurried footsteps splashing in some puddles as we make our way down the alleyway into the back end where the door to the back of Vera's club lie. Those scurried footsteps quickly make their way up and... The guards don't move. The door quietly opens as the guards continue to talk to one another, though there's nobody visible there. The Russians are looking at one another and having a chuckle and... The camera merely catches the back door open about six inches and quietly clicks shut. Soon, though, footsteps are heard. And runs once peered around the corner as Max steps out of the blood room to head back to his room. A plain-looking girl in the hallway appears. She seems out of breath, even though you know that she doesn't necessarily need to, though she has her mortal visage on. And she looks to you almost surprised to see you. And she says, I was really hoping you were going to be here tonight. And as Max looks confused, the gaze upon her, we cut to black. Oh, unless. Go ahead. And... As we cut to black, we hear Max say, Hey, you stinky. What's the rumpus? And we'll see you all next week. Hey, sure. Now, I'm sure you've heard Vera say no phones, but if we're going to break a billion followers, then I'm going to need you to do me a little favor. If you could hop onto Twitter and follow us at Pod by Night, that would be mint, and a five star review on iTunes ain't going to hurt either. And maybe I'll share some of them spicy DMs with you. Cheers, mate. <laughs>